Welcome to the Hollywood Scholar, I'm Jed Morgan, and with the recent San Diego Comic-Con and the expansive Rings of Power presence there, there are a lot of interviews that had to be compiled here by Bounding and Comments by all the showrunners, the actors involved, and just everyone around the production that had a lot of things to say at the Comic-Con, and if anyone's surprised by how asinine their responses are, you haven't been paying attention to the Rings of Power situation, because everything that they have to say is against the work of Tolkien, against the work of the Professor, and not in any way sharing the ideals and the point of this universe in which they are building this story in. It's just as bad as anyone who's been paying attention can imagine that these interviews would be. And so I want to get into some of these comments here and just show how bad these interviews truly are. Uh, the Lord of the Rings showrunner Patrick McKay attempts to address concerns show will embrace modern woke politics. And that's been a primary concern of mine. But another primary concern is they don't have access to any Tolkien dialogue. And I just don't think that these writers have the talent nor experience to represent replicate that type of talent in their dialogue writing. So that's been a major concern of mine is they just can't live up to it even without the woke politics. But the woke politics are definitely a huge addition and will be used as an excuse for the lack of talent when it comes to the writing of the dialogue. So it's just overall going to be a mess. And these comments that he has about his excuses, why it's not woke politics are contradictory at the very best. But we've got all these comments here. But at first it starts out with these comments by the YouTuber Just Some Guy who is a great Tolkien YouTuber. He knows his stuff, he knows it very, very well. And he just had these comments about why there shouldn't be untoward diversity in the universe. That doesn't make sense. There shouldn't be like black elves or anything like that. There's other continents or other places in Middle Earth where it could make sense, but driving it in where it doesn't make sense doesn't work. And he has some really good explanations why. And the only reason I'm saying this is to follow their rules, these woke people's rules. Doesn't matter to normal people, doesn't matter to me, but just some guy is a black man. So he would understand and he's allowed to have opinion by today's standards, by these woke people's standards. Not that that matters, because <laughs> black people, when they have a contradictory opinion, their opinion no longer matters. But just throwing that out there for the woke people out there, this is a black guy saying that there shouldn't be diversity like this in Tolkien's universe. But he said, the point of Tolkien's stories is to be English in design and effect. And Middle Earth reflects in its cultures, language, and appearance of all its races. To change this, to remove the Englishness, or really the whiteness from Tolkien's stories, is to undermine the very purpose of the works. Yes, it was very much a replacement for English mythology that had been lost amongst all the invasions that had taken place across English history. They needed a mythology to stand their society on, and that's true of every society out there. Is mythology and history is a very strong part of it and is very impactful to the world around it. So they needed this, and he felt that he was the man to fill in this need for the English people. So the English aspect of it is vitally important, and just some guy understands that. And he goes on to have some really good comments here about how it shouldn't be influenced by modern-day politics and that they're changing the worldview to reflect modern times versus Tolkien's. Uh, they're injecting politics and just a lot of great comments here that you should check out his video on the subject rather than just me reading his script on it. But yeah, it's a really great video. You should all check it out at just some guy on YouTube. And yeah, he really breaks down this one scene in particular where this doesn't make sense in canon and is purely based on identity politics and woke ideology and it's some really good stuff. But I wanted to jump into the actual comments of the actors and showrunners involved. So this is kind of an old interview with uh, Lindsay Weber for Vanity Fair, it felt only natural to us that an adaptation of Tolkien's work would reflect what the world actually looked like. This is English world. This is a this other universe, this other world where this story takes place is another world and the part where the story takes place is the English part of it. So it should reflect the English world. I don't want American stuff thrown in there any more than I want African, Asian, Eastern European French, it's supposed to be English. That's it. So this argument is just saying that she doesn't understand the world of Tolkien. She doesn't care about the world of Tolkien. And we've broken down these comments in the past, but it's really good to set the stage. She added, Tolkien is for everyone. His stories are about his fictional races doing their best when they leave the isolation of their old cultures and come together. Yes, that's true to a certain extent. But the thing is, yes, Tolkien is for everyone. It wouldn't be like the third highest best-selling 
series in history behind only the Bible and the Quran if it weren't for all people. It is one of the most translated books in human history. Yes, it's for everyone. Besides the Bible and the Quran, you're more likely to find Lord of the Rings than any other book anywhere you go in the world. How is that not for everyone? But a story is still built around its story elements, whether or not that's like, ooh, um, I'm in Malaysia and I can't like Tolkien because it doesn't happen in Malaysia. That is a very superficial approach to fiction and entertainment that just shows a degree of narcissism that these people I don't think realize how bad that degree of narcissism is and that can be applied to any story sometimes diversity sometimes these things make sense in a story sometimes they don't contemporary versus fantasy there's a lot of variables involved but sometimes it makes sense sometimes it doesn't sometimes it makes sense historically to be ethno state sometimes it doesn't it just historically what happened in a lot of instances and in a lot of mythologies if this were a story about African mythology I wouldn't want random white people thrown in there either and if it was a modern story, I think it should be diverse in America because America is quite a diverse country. It just depends on the context involved. But it's not about seeing myself or seeing anyone seeing themselves in it because that's a narcissistic approach and a very superficial one about physical attributes. You should connect with characters based on their decisions, motivations, and how they're able to endure these difficult trials that they undergo. That is about their character, not about the superficial nature of their physical attributes. And that's very narcissistic to focus solely on the physical attributes of a character involved. But now we're actually getting into the comments of San Diego Comic-Con, a little bit more recent stuff. So the actress who played Disa told PA Media, we are readdressing the balance within the film and television, television industry, and of course this franchise, and I hope lots of franchises moving forward. Again, she's focusing on diversity above telling the story. If she'd been like, hey, I, I hear everyone's concerns. I, I think we really captured the spirit of Tolkien and that was our uh, primary concern. I love the story that we're told and I hope you guys enjoy it when it comes out. No one would have a big issue with that and she's just saying, hey, Disa's story, it's about these things. Just focus on the character and the world and the story. No one will have a bigger issue about this. But she's just like, it's about readdressing the balance and diversity and stuff. That, when that's your primary point of marketing, that is only going to alienate your fans who just want to know more about the story and being immersed in this world and escapism. Escapism is the most important thing about entertainment, in my opinion, and that can come in a lot of different forms. And escapism isn't just turn your brain off and enjoy, like I had some recent conversations with someone in the comments of my videos. No, escapism is about being immersed in a world that isn't your own and in characters that aren't yourself and just being free and escaping from your current day issues. You don't want to be reminded of all your issues in the majority of film and television some things that are like uh, period pieces or historical sometimes it makes more sense to be more relevant but nine times out of ten this is a fantasy universe it should not be constantly reminding you of the real world in this case it's not designed to be that way so why would there be need to be a readdressing of the balances within Tolkien it's a very asinine approach in my opinion she further continued, it's their time and it's so important and I hope many people will see this fantasy and will be able to relate to it. Again, it's about relating to the physical attributes. She's like, I'm black and a black people will see black me on screen and be like, ooh, blacky, I can enjoy. That is an entirely racist and narcissistic approach that is all too relevant and all too common in today's Hollywood. This is a reflection of the world we live in. No, it's not. It should be a reflection of Middle Earth. It is not Earth. It is a different planet, a different world, a different universe. It should not be reflecting our society and our world. I don't know why that is so complicated. It is a fantasy world. Jesus Christ. There are many and we are difficult and we will embrace and discover and peel back and learn and educate and be educated. The story shouldn't be about educating people on racial politics and diversity. It should be about the story of Middle Earth. Jesus. So, yeah. <laughs> That's just how it goes today in Hollywood. That is their primary motivation in marketing. And that's why we're having so many issues with today's Hollywood wokeness. That's why I'm here on YouTube is to combat stuff like this and try to get Hollywood and people to want and fight for good stories first above all else and escapism above all else. Uh, this actor who played the original character, R. Durin, and I don't think there should be a, any original characters really in Tolkien because he had characters aplenty. That was one problem that these showrunners should not have had to face. Express a similar sentiment. The awareness of d diversity within Tolkien's original source material has grown. The cinematic world that Peter Jackson created has immense value, but we've shifted lenses since then. So yeah, it's, it has immense value, but we're more important because we're more diverse. Diversity does not add nor subtract quality in and of itself. 
the method, motivation, and execution of diversity can affect the quality of the product as a whole. But them just saying, ooh, uh, Peter Jackson stuff is great, but we're diverse, so we're better. Not a great way to start your marketing campaign when a lot of the people's love, the normies' love of this universe comes from the Peter Jackson films. Throwing a little shade at Peter Jackson's movies for not being diverse is not a good way to entice the normies and a lot of the less in-depth fans of this universe. (laughs) He continued, the conversation is different right now, but going back to the source material, the world is diverse not only in race, but also in thought. Yes, it is diversity of thought, and I think that is the most important diversity in all diversities is diversity of thought. But the world, the race's definition is different in the world of Tolkien than it is today. The definition of race in Tolkien is elves versus dwarves versus hobbits versus humans and so on. It is not about black versus white versus Asian. That's not what race means in that universe. So he's technically right, but using incorrect def- definition to make his point. It is a diverse mix, and now we're just adding people from diverse backgrounds. And again, it's their primary focus, and that is the number one issue, is that they're just focusing on diversity above everything else, above these characters, above the story. And as someone who values character and story so much in writing, that it's the most important thing to me. This is so abysmal to me and so offensive to me that they're just like, ooh, um, let's not talk about the story. Let's not talk about the characters. Did you know the characters are diverse? Did you know I get that from the 100 other interviews that you've heard today? It's diverse, guys, and that's why it's better than everything else. And then as soon as the show comes out, if anyone criticizes the writing and the characters, they're just going to say, oh, you just don't like black people. No, it's your method, motivation, execution of the inclusion of those black people that created the issue because it's an excuse for bad writing to cover up your sins and I'm never going to forgive that and it's never going to be enough for me just to turn away and ignore it just because diversity is included and we have another interview here from Cynthia Robertson who plays Muriel also stated the cast is truly global again focusing on the diversity aspect every sort of their frame of reference in terms of culture their heritage what it means to be them their language still again we've I've seen every one of these actors in their interviews, their primary focus is diversity. And that's not what this world is about. It should be like, hey, I, I love these movies. I'm so excited to be a part of these. I- I'm playing a queen of Numenor. Let's, uh, I-, I just really can't wait for you guys to see the world we created for Numenor, the culture, and how we interact with people and the story. This character, she's a very strong one who she's the last, in this case, the last line before Numenor falls. And she's fighting against the disbelief of the people, the lack of faith, because that's why Numenor originally fell, is because they were corrupted and turned away from their god. And that would be an interesting thing to take it with the marketing, is just focusing on the character and story. But no, again, she's just like, ooh, um, we're from all over the world, and cultural heritage, and diversity, and it's, it's truly insensitive to the Tolkien fans who actually just want the story told because it could be a lot of cool stories. I think it should be divided up far more than it is. Have a series about the fall of Numenor, a series about the forging of the Rings of Power. It's just too congested, if nothing else as well, beyond the lack of dialogue. That's another primary concern of mine. But it is a lot of cool stuff that could be adapted so well into television and film. But these people, they do not care about that. As shown in every single one of these interviews by showrunners and actors, it is about diversity. Now we have this uh, interview from one of the directors, uh, Wayne Chi Yip. I apologize if I pronounce that incorrectly. Uh, tonally, we wanted Rings of Power to reflect Tolkien's main story points of friendship, good and evil. How far into the darkness are you willing to go to do the right thing? And that was echoed again by J.D. Payne, one of the showrunners, is this idea of going too far into the darkness. How far are you willing to go into the darkness to do what's right? And that's actually very much against the idea of Tolkien. It, he was very much against the concept of of the ends justify the means and depending on the story that could be a good thing like I I like to go into that idea of the ends justify the means but it is against the work of Tolkien and just like Peter Jackson beautifully said when interviewing for the Lord of the Rings original trilogy he said it wasn't about inputting our messages into Tolkien it was about making sure that Tolkien's messages were included in this story and that's how I feel about this even though I like to explore the idea of the ends justify the means that is not the point of his story and it's something that he was very much against so the fact that this director and the showrunner both had near word for word the same question of how far into the darkness are you willing to go to fight for what's right being so antithetical to the worldview of Tolkien is just shows again how they are very much 
inept at adapting this man's work, the professor's work, and just out of their depth more than anything else, and really don't care to learn and understand why he was so against this concept. They're not worried about giving his messages, his stories. They just got the story points and made their own story and put in woke stuff to excuse their lack of talent. And that's where so many of these issues derive from. And Patrick McKay went further into this saying it was a primary debate between C.S. Lewis and uh, the professor who I've liked a lot of C.S. Lewis stuff in the past. I've grown to dislike it as I grow older and prefer Tolkien stuff. But he was also a very intelligent man. And the idea of allegory versus and story points and reflection of history, not commenting, and that all makes sense. That they did have those arguments. Narnia is definitely way more of an allegory than anything Tolkien ever wrote. But McKay's comments here are when things really get bad. Tolkien was not trying to transmit a message that spoke to contemporary politics. He wanted to create a mythos that was timeless and would be applicable. And the word, his word, applicable, the uh, applicability across time. And yes, to a certain extent, that is true. But it's not about a message at all, even to contemporary politics. And so why are they trying to change that and be timeless with current day stuff? It's like, yeah, we want to be applicable timelessly by including modern day stuff. He's trying to justify Tolkien's worldview of being timeless with his inclusion of modern day politics. Because I guarantee you, in less than 10 years, the type of stuff that is included in the story, the messaging that he feels is timeless, McKay feels is timeless, will be forgotten and be just so out of date that it's totally irrelevant in the future. But it's timeless because it's active today. That is not what the word timeless means. Uh, McKay elaborated, every single choice we've made at every turn of making the show has been to be faithful to that aspiration because that's what we want viewers. We want to adapt the material in a way that might feel dated. We aspire to being timeless. And timeless is a very difficult thing, but every decision you've made contradicts that statement because in and of that statement, if that statement were taken out of context, I didn't know anything else about this show, that's not a bad statement, but it's contradicted by everything else he said, everything else the cast has said, and everything we've seen from the production and the marketing to the trailers, the images, everything contradicts this, and that's why it's unbelievable. We can't trust this decent enough comment about wanting to be timeless, and uh, I don't believe him. That's why these books still speak to people so much, because so much of what's in them has not aged today, and we aspire to do the same thing. And that's a very, very difficult thing to do. But it's not a bad goal. It's just not his goal. It's just as an excuse to combat those who say woke politics is going to be a primary point of the show, as has been proven by those previous interviews that I read. Those are 100% proof that this will be a very, very woke show. When asked, hey, will this show be woke? He just rattles off this nonsense that in and of itself might be a good comment, but is just an excuse to cover up that he's actually going to be including incredible amounts of woke politics into this story. And I feel that once people see the show and see what stories and characters and worlds are in the context, they will feel the same way. Uh, <laughs> I would bet my life savings that he is wrong, that he's 100% wrong. I mean, just look at the ratios on every single trailer, every single video put out by this show. People are not accepting it. They are rejecting it, and it's only going to get worse. Once it actually comes out, I guarantee that that ratio, whether or not it's actually on YouTube or just in the fan base itself, will grow and grow and grow until... No one actually cares about the story who actually cares about Tolkien. They are mutually exclusive at this point. You cannot love Rings of Power and Tolkien at the same time because they are not the same thing. And Rings of Power is an utter, total bastardization of Tolkien injected with woke politics to cover up the lack of talent and lack of creativity that these writers and showrunners have. And these comments, again, out of context... Not bad, but they're contradicted by everything else that these showrunners say, everything else that the actors say, that it just shows that they are afraid. And so they realize that people are rejecting the wokeness, so they had to do this little thing to try and appease the fans calling out the wokeness, but it's not going to be enough. These little comments are not going to be anywhere near enough to combat the fear and the dread of the fans for this upcoming series and the knowledge that it will totally bastardize and destroy the world of Tolkien in ways that we can't really dream of. I feel that this show will be far more damaging to the world of Tolkien than any other previous property, even The Last Jedi to Star Wars. I firmly believe that this will be the worst, but also the best in terms of the fan base uniting against such garbage that we may see a change in Hollywood in the end because of this, because of how massive the backlash to these decisions, to this abysmal show will be. It, I think it might be enough to start a change, maybe down the road, but the backlash has been so massive that change 
is possible and change is more within grasp than it has ever been before, even since before The Last Jedi. The Last Jedi will pale in comparison to the backlash that this show will cause. But anyway, that's all I have for today. I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. Please like, share, and subscribe, and I will see you in the next video. Anon. If you like what I do here and want to see good, compelling stories that Hollywood will no longer give you, check out my book series, Odyssey of a Phoenix, a mythological epic about philosophy, morality, and modern-day mental illness issues. Books 1, Down in Flames, and Book 2, Apocalypse Then, currently on sale. Book 3, Kill the Dark, coming soon.